Okay, thank you everyone for joining us. On behalf of Benefit Express, we really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day. Today's webinar is Mid-Year Election Changes Under Cafeteria Plans. We have Larry Grugin, our ERISA attorney, who will be conducting the interview. He is an excellent, excellent resource for questions. So please feel free to ask your question. He will pause several times throughout the presentation. Or you can use the questions tab in your GoToWebinar toolbar. And I'm happy to ask the question on your behalf and find out the answer. Our next webinar is coming up, and it is on the pros and cons of self-insured versus fully insured, and that's on Tuesday, June 7th at 1 p.m. You can register there at BenefitExpressOnline.com, and you'll see under Resources, you'll see the um, Webinars tab. We also record all our webinars, so they will be available for viewing. We'll probably give it maybe till tomorrow or Thursday, but and all of our old ones are archived on there, a great resource as well. I'll turn it over to Larry. Thank you. Um, for those of you who um, entered early, I was talking, I'm having a seminar next week for free, and I'll send Stacy the invite, but I'm reviewing a form 1094C. It's going to be on May 25th at uh, 1 o'clock Central Time. So if you're in the throngs of trying to get that out and want one final review, uh, that's what I've done. Uh, I decided to have a seminar just to help people. So if you, um, I'm going to send the invite to Stacy. Then I, if uh, at the the end of the slide, you'll see my email address. If you want to send me an email, and I'll send you an invite. But again, uh, registration is free. And if you want one final stab at the com uh, completing the 1094 Cs. All right, let's go through this. Um, Mid-year election changes under cafeteria plans. Uh, this area is very complicated, very convoluted, and there's a number of factors involved. Uh, anytime you have a cafeteria plan, uh, employees have to understand that if, if they're going to do pre-tax elections, that only under certain circumstances can they change their elections over the years. There's a number of different situations that can be in your cafeteria plan that should be explained in your cafeteria plan. Uh, but please understand that even though I'm going to be indicating all the possible events that could allow someone to make a change, your plan could only have some of the uh, events that are allowed by law or none of the events allowed by law. And this is one area that both employers and employees struggle with because they're trying to understand under what, under what situations they, an individual can change their election. The most common question I get in this area is, well, somebody signed up for a benefit, whether it's medical, whatever it is, and after a few weeks, um, they, uh, they come back to the employer and said, well, I can't afford it. Can I change my election? And technically, that's not a reason, as you're going, are going to see in the next few minutes, to allow an employee to change their election. Uh, another common situation is where someone signs up for dependent care, and they, uh, despite all the information in your SPD, they think dependent care means uh, I'm going to pay for my medical expenses through that. Well, it's not. It's for against. Uh, it's for babysitting, and uh, t um, it's not for medical. So uh, in that situation, an employee makes a mistake. And they come back to you a few weeks uh, later and said, hey, I, I, I read the SPD, and I, I was mistaken. Can I change my election? Uh, in those situations, if it's a mistake, you can't allow an employee to get out of the plan. But it's a little suspicious if somebody three, four, five, six months after they make the election, they come back and say, I made a mistake. It's up to your discretion on what situations you can allow a person to change their election in that circumstance when there's a supposed mistake. So here, the general uh, irrevitable rule, no change is required for the year, but there are 15 different events that are recognized by the IRS as permitting mid-year election changes. And as I indicated before, you as an employer have to choose all 15, 7, 15, 12 of the 15, it's up to you. But what you have to do is put those events in your cafeteria plan document and then 
uh, what you have to do is communicate that that to your employees so they fully understand uh, under what situations they can change their election. Now, again, there's other events uh, are recognized, and it's up to your discretion. Mistakes is one of them uh, that you can allow an employee to change their election. But these are extremely important to understand and to communicate to the important uh, to your employees. Now, there's also administrative requirements. Um, and basically, uh, what some employers do, if they somebody has an excuse and they want to change, they have to get documentation on what that situation is. Now, here are all the 15 different situations that you can allow by law in your cafeteria plan document. Now, um, what's also important is that you check with your insurer and your broker to see if there's any restrictions in your insurance contract or your medical plan that would prohibit some of these events from being realized because you can't contradict either your insurance certificate or your other plan documents uh, in allowing changes. So even though the law may allow you to change your uh, situation, uh, the contracts, the insurance contracts, or the plan documents may have limitations under what situations the plan allows it or the insurer allows it. But in these 15, I will cover each one. The most common that many people, um, that many plans have, is a change of status. You get married, you get divorced, you, uh, uh, your spouse changes jobs, uh, lose, uh, loses other coverage. Uh, cost changes with automatic increases and decreases. In that situation, many times, and the law recognizes this, that you may have a, a renewal date different than the uh, the year in your cafeteria plan. So if there is a, a jump at the cost, um, you don't have to go back and get another election from the employee. But there could be situations where there are substantial cost changes. And what you can do if there is a substantial increase in the middle of the year, uh, you can allow individuals in some situations to change their election uh, and either switch to a cheaper plan or eliminate the coverage. But again, that's something you should um, check with your insurance company. Another event is significant uh, coverage curtailment. Uh, there are situations where a provider network or there could be other changes in the plan in the middle of the year, which could make the plan useless. And so in, that, in those situations, uh, you could allow a change. Another one is uh, addition or, or significant improvement of benefit packages uh, during the renewal. Um, there's a change in the, in the benefit that makes it more desirable. You can, uh, again, allow employees to change. Uh, a very, another very common one is um, cost of coverage under another employer's plan. Uh, your spouse is working for an employer. They have a renewal date different than yours. Um, you can allow an employee to switch and go to the spouse's plan in the middle of the year. But again, those are situations that you may have to check with the insurer to see if they allow that situation. So again, you have to be very careful in this before you um, put these in your plan, you have to make sure the insurer is, is great with this. Loss of coverage under a group health plan of the government or educational institution, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, those situations where uh, there could be a loss of coverage in that situation, then you can allow them back in the plan. Uh, HIPAA special enrollment rights, you get married, you get uh, you loss of coverage, you have a child, uh, there you are um, can uh, change your election for that. COBRA qualifying events, uh, when there's a COBRA, when somebody goes on COBRA, uh, again, you can allow individuals to their election in that situation to drop coverage. Judgments, decrees, and orders, those come in when you have a medical child support order. Um, in that situation, you can allow somebody to drop coverage. Um, family and medical leave of absence, when somebody goes on family and medical leave, you can allow someone to change their coverage in that situation. Our uh, pre-tax uh, HSA contributions. In that situation, you have an HSA contribution, you can allow them to change, you have to allow them to change coverages or allow them to change the um, contribution 
at least once a month. So it's different than um, all the other contributions. Now, two new ones that just have come over the last couple of years are the reduction of hours in marketplace enrollment. Um, reduction of hours comes in, uh, for example, if you have a variable hour employee, that person that you went through a measurement period, that person is full time. During their stability period, uh, you offer them coverage, and they take the coverage. Well, a few months or weeks after they take the coverage, their hours drop. Uh, under certain conditions, you can allow that person to drop coverage, go on the exchange, get other coverage, so you can allow them to do that, especially when you have some industries that have a lot of variable hour employees. Lastly, marketplace enrollment. Uh, you can allow an employee to drop coverage if they get enrolled in the marketplace. But again, that's another situation. You have to check with your insurer to see if they're okay with that. Okay? So let's start, and then every so often I will ch stop for questions. And Stacy, why don't you stop me too if you get questions? Yes, okay, will do. All right. The most common in most plans, if you check your cafeteria plan document, the most common event that's in almost all cafeteria plans. Oh, and one other thing I just want to mention, and I will mention this uh, in the presentation. If you look at this list, it's pretty extensive. Not all these events apply to health FSAs. So it's extremely important to understand that. Uh, I have a slide that just devoted to health FSA. Now, generally, uh, as a rule of thumb, if there is a change in cost and coverage, that is an event that is recognized for health FSAs. Uh, and this becomes a real problem if somebody has a medical plan that has a year different than the cafeteria plan year, and in the middle of the cafeteria plan year, you switch to a high deductible plan, and employees want to uh, contribute to an HSA and they're, con they're participating under a health FSA. Well, and technically, uh, any change in cost and coverage is not a reason to change your election under health FSA, so that, that's a problem. So you can't allow an employee an election to switch in the middle of the year just because they've decided to go into health FSA, to go into a high deductible plan. So here are the changes you can change if you are changing the uh, employee a marital status, change in the number of dependents, change in employment status, uh, dependent satisfying or ceasing to satisfy dependent eligibility requirements, change in residence and in, in commencement and termination of adoption proceedings. Now, in this situation, uh, generally these um, events are allowable if they affect eligibility for benefits. And the plan document must include, uh, again, if you want to include this, all these different events. Now, in regard to change in marital status, it could be marriage, divorce, death of a spouse, legal separation, or annulment can, again, uh, in that situation, you can drop the spouse. Uh, change in number of dependents, that includes uh, birth, adoption, placement for adoption, or death. You can remove somebody from the plan and change your election, okay? in regard to changing employment status. And this could be the employment status of, of the particular employee or of their spouse. That includes termination and commencement of employment, strike, uh, lockout, commencement or return from unpaid leave, change in work site that, again, affects eligibility, or any change in employment status causing a change in eligibility. So, for example, if you're in a plan that are just for salaried employee, and you change your status to hourly, that could, again, allow you to change your election under the plan. So these are all events that could allow an employee to change their coverage. Um, dependents satisfying or ceasing to satisfy eligibility. Status event is one that causes an employee to satisfy or cease to satisfy. They, no, they are no longer eligible to participate under the plan, so therefore the employer cannot take out pre-tax contributions. So in this situation, um, you can allow an employee to change their election to either add a dependent or to drop a dependent if they're no longer eligible. 
change in residence. And this, every once in a while, becomes important because that person works for you and they're working in, in a state that you're located and they're transferred to another state. And the coverage they had here working for you um, is no longer offered in the state they're moving to. So here, um, a change in residence is only acceptable if the change in residence changes the eligibility for health coverage. And this is particularly important for HMOs. Somebody's in a local HMO and they move to Oregon and that HMO is no longer, um, there's no services there, then you can allow them to drop coverage and select something else that would be appropriate to where they're moving to. Um, commencement or termination of adoption proceedings in that situation, what you could do is, again, either include or exclude a dependent uh, because of one of these two different events. Now, what's important here, there's the consistency requirement, which means uh, if there's an event, what is allowable is what's consistent with the event. If somebody, uh, if you want to add somebody to the plan, well, the consistent thing to do is add them, not drop them. So there's various consistency rules um, under this. If the change in status of occurs event, the employee uh, may only allow, permit an employee to make changes that are consistent with the event. And there's one general consistency rule, and there's four special ones. Now, there's a special consistency rule for group uh, term, life, disability, and dismemberment, um, dependent care and adoption um, expenses, a special consistency rule for loss of, uh, of spouses or dependent eligibility, special consistency rule to gain eligibility in another plan. So here, under the special rule for uh, group term life, what this slide is trying to say, a participant can increase or decrease a group term life disability determinant for any change in status event, even though the eligibility is that change to loss. So again, um, in that situation, the event, for example, getting married is enough uh, to change it. And you can increase it or decrease it, it doesn't matter. But again, you have to check the insurance contract to, to determine whether the event is allowable for dependent care and adoption uh, expenses. The rule is satisfied if the election change on account of the corresponds with status that affects eligibility for the dependent care and adoption assistance. The election may be canceled when the employee's child turns 13 and employee or spouse leaves of absence. So again, under this rule, you can change your election, but only if it's consistent with the event. For example, if you change babysitters, change your provider in this situation. And you go from one um, provider to another provider, and that provider is more expensive. In that situation, what you can do is increase your election. So again, that's the uh, consistency rule. In regard to a loss of spouse or dependents eligibility, an employee can cancel accident and health coverage for only the spouse or dependent, but you can't change it for all the other uh, individuals that are covered on there. So again, um, in that situation, only those that are affected, their election can be changed. Uh, special consistency rule for gain or eligibility under another employer's plan. If the coverage is gained as a result of a change in marital employment status, the employee's election to cease or to decrease the coverage for that individual corresponds with the change in coverage uh, for that individual becomes effect or, or is increased in another plan. So it has to be consistent with what's happening. So if somebody gains eligibility in a plan, you can decrease your election. If somebody loses eligibility, that's another situation. Now, if one of the four special rules don't apply, then the general consistency rule applies. Under this rule, an election change satisfies the consistency rule if the change on account or corresponds with the change in status that affects it. So here, that rule has two elements. The change in status must affect the eligibility, and the election change must be an account or correspond with the event. 
So generally what that means is there has to be something happening that affects eligibility, and then that change has to be consistent with what happens. So again, if you get married, you want to add a spouse. That's an example in that situation. The change in status must affect eligibility for coverage under the employer's plan. Gain or loss in coverage eligibility under the component plan, uh, a change in status that affects eligibility, and the election change must be on account of and correspond with the event. If one type of coverage is lost or gained, then the employee is limited to changing um, to another type of coverage. Um, other eligible individuals can also be added when the spouse or dependent gains eligibility. If the employee has no previous enrolled and change in status occurs, this will allow the employee to enroll in order to enroll the dependents. So again, um, you have to remember there has to be an event that causes, uh, that affects eligibility, and then the change has to be consistent with that event. Stacy, are there any questions? I did just get a couple, so let's go over those. First question, what constitutes significance on the 15 events mid-year election changes, number three, four, and five? Uh, a change that's generally between 50 to 15 or 20 percent, either an increase or a decrease. That's significant. Okay, and then one. So, one. Oh, sorry. So various. Uh, there's nothing written in the statute. That's what uh, again, certain rulings have indicated. They they've indicated what is not significant. They haven't really said specifically what is significant. So generally, I'd, I'd say between 15 to 20 percent change. Did you say if you have an HSA, you need to allow them to change contributions once a month? Correct. Okay. And then another clarification, if I have a child, not only can I add my newborn, but I can also change the plan? Correct. Okay. And then I, hold on, I got a cup, one email to me. Let me pull that up. terminate their spouse without reason? There has to be a qualifying event. Okay, and then one, one last question. If an employee says to... Now, again, the only exception to that is open enrollment. We're talking about events that happen during the year, so at open enrollment. And, and, and this becomes a real issue um, if somebody draw now, this is the this is the question I usually get. Now, remember, at any time at open enrollment, you can make changes to your election, no problem. What we're talking about here is changes during the plan year. That's what we're talking about. So, at any open enrollment, you can add or drop dependents. But this is during the year. Now, if you decide to drop a spouse. For no apparent reason at open enrollment, the disadvantage of that is the fact that that spouse is now ineligible for COBRA because yes, there's a loss of coverage, and yes, you drop them, but there has to be one of the qualifying events under the COBRA rules for you as an employer to offer them coverage. Employee says to HR, I want to terminate my medical insurance mid-year, and they were contributing under a cafeteria plan. Aren't they allowed to terminate without a special event? Nope. Okay, so must they give a reason? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And that's an extremely important question because, again, as I said in the beginning, employees have to understand that, that once once you um, make pre-tax contributions to the plan, the problem is going to be that only under certain conditions, and that's one, one area that employees don't understand. You mean I can't drop coverage at any time? No, you have to have a qualifying event. One of these events we'll be talking about in order to change your election. You're making a commitment to the plan that you're going to continue in the plan for the rest of the year, unless you have a, one of these qualifying events, which I'll be covering, you can't change your election. You're stuck. 
for the entire year. Okay, one more, one two-parted question. If a spouse goes out on leave of absence, can the employee change benefits? Uh, they can they can change their they can change their election. Um, for example, they can stop. Now, is the employee is the employee going out on leave, or is the spouse going out on leave? The spouse is going out on leave, not the employee. And she's covered by the by the by the employee's plan. Uh, again. Uh, the, the spouse could drop coverage for that spouse. I don't know why they would do that, but that's, again, an event that would cause. Okay. Okay. And then the second part is, if an employee's child is in daycare and changes to preschool within the same provider, but cost had changed, is this a qualifying event to enroll? In the dependent care program? In Yes, in dependent care program. Well, how does she know that? Please do a clarification. Oh, clarification. Okay, so clarify. Yeah, she's that. not. If she is already enrolled, okay. I don't understand that. So please, um, could you do a clarification yeah, on that? that? And then, does changing child providers, child care providers, affect eligibility eligibility for DCFSA? Therefore, an employee can make changes to their DCFSA elections according to the cost of the child care services. Uh, yes, if there's an increase in cost, you could probably change your election. Okay. All right. I'm getting a lot in here. If an employee is not participating in the cafeteria plan, but then one or more of their dependents has a qualifying event, would that allow them to enter the plan with employee plus dependent coverage, even though the employee themselves has not had a qualifying event? Well, they have to ask the question, what would be the qualifying event for the child? That's, what I, that's my question which would allow them to, to enroll in. I mean, that's... Okay. And then, does having a baby allow an employee to add a spouse as well as the new child? There's some limitations. I think it's possible, but I'd have to look at that. Okay. But it, it is possible. You can add, I think you can add a spouse, you can add a child under the special enrollment rights okay. to do that. And you can change coverages. Okay. And employees spouse was hired for a job and was due to become eligible for insurance in 60 days, but was fired prior to the effective date. Is this considered a qualifying event for the spouse to come onto the employee's plan, even though there is no loss of coverage? There has to be a loss. Of, well, the qualifying event would be termination of employment. Okay. Okay. Um, can you, and then can you clarify what you said about changing plans when having children? We allow them to add the baby but not change plans. You can change plans in that situation. Once you have a kid, all the different elections are possible. Okay, okay. But there are limitations on, on who you can add. And I think what you can do, you can add the newborn, but if you haven't covered other children, I don't think you can add the other children. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and unmute. Just be... Um, conscious that we can hear what you're saying so if you have us on hold if you're chatting and you're not don't have us on mute if you're not asking a question please put us on mute that would be great any other the conference questions? has been unmuted any other questions okay, okay. all right let's now go. you're going to uh, notice these next the conference few. has been muted Uh, it's going to very specifically indicate applies to all qualified benefits except for health care FSAs. So any time you have a change in cost and coverage, it is not going to allow you to change your elections under the health FSA. Automatic increases and decreases, as you see there. Basically, what that indicates and how to explain it to people is the fact that many times the benefits under the cafeteria plan, the other underlying benefits, have a different renewal date than, um, than what the cafeteria plan coverage period is. And that allows an employer to make an increase in the benefits without going back to the employees and saying, uh, I want you to do another election. 
that allows the employer to increase the election of the employee without, without getting their permission. But this is only allowable if the increase is not significant. In other words, the increase is um, below 15 or 20 percent. Now, in the significant cost increases, uh, again, this does not apply to health FSAs and change the situation what the employer can do if they have this event in their plan. If at renewal there are, if when the other coverage is renewed during the plan year, if there's significant increases, uh, what the employer can do is they can allow the employee to uh, change their election in the middle of the year or drop coverage if there's significant cost increases. So again, only if there's significant uh, uh, difference in cost in the plan can an employer do that. And this is something that, again, uh, you have to check with your insurer to see if it's possible. So election can be revoked if no other benefit option providing similar coverage is available. If similar coverage is available, it can be elected, but coverage cannot be dropped. And again, applies to um, all qualified uh, benefits. So again, if there is a significant curtailment of coverage, you can now, for example, um, in this situation, if you're under a group health plan and all of a sudden a significant network uh, in the health plan goes away. And this has happened uh, many times throughout the years where uh, your doctor and the network gets pulled. Okay, If this event is in your cafeteria plan, uh, your election can be revoked and no other benefit election providing similar coverage. If there are similar coverage, then you can elect that other coverage. But again, you must your plan must contain this provision. What's the uh, what's the definition of significant curtailment of coverage? Uh, there could be an overall reduction in, in coverage provided on the plan. Um, events that constitute significant curtailment. It could be increase in deductibles, increase in copays, increase in out of pockets, but also uh, cutting of coverage um, in the plan. Definition of loss of coverage, a complete loss of coverage under the benefit option. A managed care network ceases to be available, as I indicated before. An individual losing all coverage as a result of annual or lifetime limits, which is no longer true under ACA. Uh, a substantial decrease in the medical providers available. And a reduction of benefits for, for a specific type of medical condition. So in this situation at renewal, for example, an employer has decided to drop a particular treatment which you were receiving, um, this could then you could allow that employee to change their coverage in the middle of the year. Uh, with the definition of similar coverage, coverage for the same category of benefits, major medical to major medical, coverage must be available to cover the same individuals, and a cafeteria plan may treat a spouse of dependents plan as similar coverage. Uh, addition of significant improvement um, in this situation, number five, uh, participants can elect new or newly improved benefits on a prospective basis. It applies, again, to all benefits except uh, health FSA. So in the middle of the year when you have a renewal, you can allow employees, again, to switch coverages. But again, you have to check with the insurance company. Number six, coverage, uh, changing coverage of spouse or dependents. Uh, this is a very popular one. I get asked this all the time. Um, an employee is uh, married to a spouse that whose uh, employer's plan is different. Their renewal date is different. Uh, that individual um, just got a new job. They're newly, um, they decide to enroll in the plan, which you can do. You can allow the spouse to leave, but you can also allow the employee to leave. But again, this is something and sometimes we run into this, the insurance company says, nope, we're not going to recognize this situation, so the employee and the, and the dependent could be stuck if the insurance company doesn't allow it. So again, this is something to check before you put this in your plan. But again, this arises many times when you have a spouse that has a different renewal date than yours. So four types of coverage changes are possible under the spouse independent plan. Uh, it could be mandatory changes in coverage initiated by the insurer, 
mandatory changes. Uh, this is a change in cost and coverage, mandatory changes in coverage initiated by the spouse's employer, optional coverage changes initiated by the spouse's employer, changes in coverage initiated. So there's a reduction, there's a reduction in, uh, in coverage under the spouse's plan. You can let that spouse come into your plan if you want. And again, you have to check with the insurance company. Uh, loss of coverage under the health coverage under the uh, group plan. This includes a state a child uh, insurance program, medical coverage under an Indian tribe, state insurance, risk pool, foreign government um, plan. All this, again, could be allowed. Uh, this applies to all benefits except for health FSAs. Special enrollment, this comes a lot. Uh, there are three different situations that come up with special enrollment situations. Um, there's a loss of coverage, employee acquires a new dependent, or individual loses or gains eligibility under Medicaid or CHIP. In these situations, you can allow an employee back into your plan. So you had an employee, for example, that were covered by the spouse's plan, that, spouse's, that spouse gets fired, that employee loses coverage, they can, both the spouse and dependent can come back into the plan. Another situation, employee acquires a new dependent. Uh, now what's important about that, and this is something that to warn employees, and let me give you a scenario on that. You have an employee, for example, that has family coverage. And then they have another child. Under these rules, um, you have to enroll that child within, th uh, within 30 days of the event. If you don't enroll the child within 30 days of the event, many insurance contracts have this, that child cannot be enrolled. So please understand that. Uh, for the individuals who lose coverage and for the uh, employee acquires a new uh, dependent, either child or spouse, they have 30 days to enroll. The last event in individuals who gain or lose eligibility for Medicare, that situation is um, you have 60 days to enroll in that situation. COBRA qualifying event, a cafeteria plan may permit an employee to make a mid-year election change which occurs to the employee's positive dependent. Uh, an employee may increase pre-tax salary reductions to cover COBRA premiums. Uh, employee has a reduction of hours targeting a COBRA qualifying event. He may increases, he or she may increase their pre-tax salary reductions to cover cost uh, COBRA premiums. Adjustments, decrees, and orders. This is another real popular one in a situation where um, a cafeteria plan may allow a mid-year change because a divorce, legal separation, annulment, change in legal custody. So an employee receives a qualifying uh, medical child support order. The employee is allowed uh, to change their election in order to change the child or to cover the child. Uh, and many times the courts will force an employer to cover the individual, but this is, again, the employee will be allowed to change their election. Stacy, do we have any other uh, questions? I do have a few. Would you recommend employers offer a pre-tax election plan and a post-tax option so employees understand the difference in terms and costs? Well, um, under the cafeteria plan rules, what they what they indicate because you're you're uh, under a cafeteria plan there always has to be a choice between cash or benefits. Now, if you um, allow employees to waive coverage, you don't have to have a post tax um, election in your plan. If you say to employees, "I'm sorry, but we're not going to allow you to waive coverage. You have to take it," in that situation, to in order to allow in order to satisfy the cash option, you have to allow them to um, elect on a post-tax basis. Now, sometimes um, employees, employers um, provide for post-tax contributions in some benefits, for example, like disability benefits that they contribute on a post-tax basis. If they get disabled, then any benefits paid are going to be tax-free. 
if disability benefits are paid on a pre-tax basis, then any benefits received as a result of that disability, those benefits would be taxable. So and many employers in this situation give employees a choice. Okay. Going back to change in status, it's been my understanding that terminating employment is not a life event. The loss of coverage is the life event. Is this correct? Well, it can be. Well, it, if you have a if you have a termination of employment which causes a loss of coverage, it has to cause there has to be two things. There has to be an event, and the event has to has to affect the eligibility for coverage. Okay, and she goes on to say the employee has a spouse who lost his employment but was not covered with his employer. Can and I there wouldn't be right. Okay. You are correct in that. Same thing if there's a reduction of hours, but the reduction of hours doesn't cause the change in eligibility. It's not a qualifying event. Next question. So the health FSA renews on one to one on one one, but the insurance plan renews on six one. An employee elected under the health health FSA based on the medical plan OOP, but now on six one the plan changes and has less OOP. Can the employee change the election on that FSA? No. No. See, that's that's the problem. That's what what the most common situation I've seen. People come to me, and, and you know, the renewal date for the health plan, let's say, renews on seven one, and the uh, FSA renews on one one. In the middle of the year, the employer changes it to do a to do a health uh, high deductible plan, um, and then the employer employee comes to you and said, "Wait a minute, um, I did a high deductible plan, and I want to contribute to um, an HSA." And the employer said, "I'm sorry, but you know, you, you know, six months ago you decided to renew your FSA. Why well, didn't know at the time? The only thing the employer could do uh, to allow employees to, they can't give them an election to change change their uh, health FSA election, but they could amend the health FSA to be a limited purpose, which would allow them then to contribute to a." Um, a health FSA, but you can't give an employee an election. Okay, next question. So HIPAA special enrollment isn't required. The cafeteria plan may allow, but doesn't have to. Correct. All these events you can allow, but you don't. But you don't have to. And I and I've seen some employers, for example, the most common events that are in a cafeteria plan would be the change in status. That's the most common. All the others can be, but they don't have to be. Last question, when does change of coverage of spouse or dependent apply to domestic partners? Uh, it doesn't. Uh, it really doesn't. Okay, I spoke too soon. One more it's question. Not, it's, not a, it's not a recognized, um, now because of, um, now because of same-sex marriage, it's not a recognized situation. So again, um, you have to be very careful and look at and look at the insurance contract to see under what situations and what rights the domestic partner has. Okay. Last question. Please confirm that an employee cannot change his or her medical or limited flexible spending account during a change of status. The only exception would be the dependent FSA. Wait a minute. Repeat that over again. Sure. Please confirm that an employee cannot change his or her medical or limited flexible spending accounts during a change of status. Uh, it depends on the change in status. Some of some change in status are allowed. Okay, she said the only exception would be the dependent F FSA. Is that correct? No, no, no. If there's a change in status, for example, if there's a marriage, a divorce, in that situation, you can change your election. If there's any change in coverage, that's not the case. Okay, Debbie, if you need clarification, just email me and I'll, I'll ask um, again. Okay, that's all, all right. I have. So let's, let's do the remaining events, then we can go into more detail. Okay, great. Uh, number 11 is the entitlement to Medicare or, Medicare or Medicaid. Um, here it says a cafeteria plan may allow mid-year election changes on account of eligibility of the employee's spouse dependent for Medicare or Medicaid. Uh, gaining Medicare or Medicaid allows an employer to cancel or reduce coverage. Losing Medicare or Medicaid uh, allows them to increase coverage. 
Family and medical leave, uh, in that situation, if somebody goes on family and medical leave, they have the right to uh, change their election. They can uh, drop coverage in that situation. But here's what's extremely important to remember. If somebody's on family and medical leave and they don't pay the premium and the coverage lapses, all right, that's not a COBRA qualifying event until the end of the family and medical leave. So here, um, before they go on leave, the employer must allow all elections to change available. The plan must uh, must allow employees to revoke health coverage. The employee can re reinstate coverage upon return. If the employee continues coverage during the uh, family and medical leave, it can be paid prepay, in other words, before the, um, before the absence pay as you go during the absence or the catch up. Uh, these rules apply to health FSA as a uniform coverage rule. Pre-tax HSA contributions. As I said before, pre-tax uh, HSA are offered through prospective HSA election change at least monthly, a time period that corresponds to the uh, HSA monthly rules. So if you do pre-tax contributions, the general cafeteria plan rules don't apply. So um, you can change it for any reason on a monthly basis. So and it could be even more frequently, but it, they have to be allowed to change every month. Now, the new um, events that uh, have only been around for a couple of years is reduction of hours. You have an employee that's determined to be a full-time employee. Um, they are a variable hour employee. They're offered coverage, and their hours drop below 30. Such reduction does not make the employee ineligible for medical coverage because during the stability period that person is always treated as full time. The employee can be allowed to drop coverage if the employee intends to enroll in other essential coverage. Such elections not apply to health FSAs. But again, you can allow employee to drop coverage if they tell you they're going to get other coverage. But the, what's interesting, the employer doesn't have to um, make assurances that all, all the employee has to do is tell them they're going to do it, but they don't have to do it. The other situation is marketplace enrollment. An employee who is eligible to enroll in marketplace during uh, either special open enrollment may drop coverage. But again, this such election does not apply to health FSAs, but you have to check with the insurance company to see if they're going to allow this. So you can allow an employee if they get on the marketplace because of either a special enrollment or open enrollment to drop your coverage. You can allow it, you don't, or you're not required to allow it. So these are the events, mid-year events that are allowed for health FSAs. Change in status, COBRA qualifying events, judgments, decrees, and orders, entitlement to Medicare, Medicaid, family and medical leave, and that's it. They're allowed under family and under health FSAs. Other events that may permit mid-year election changes. Military leave under USERA, mistakes made by employer or employee. And again, it's up to your discretion what mistakes you're going to allow. Uh, and, uh, participant fails medical underwriting. That's not really true anymore with health care reform. Mid-year election changes may be required to pass non-discrimination rules. And in some, in some situations, automatic loss in coverage because of fraud. Uh, and again, administrative requirements. Uh, make sure you substantiate any reasons for change. Put in the employee's file. Decide when the election can be effective. You can do it the next payroll period, the beginning of the month after the payroll period. Confirm the cafeteria plan regulations allow the change and confirm the plan document and the insurance policies allow such election. That's an extremely important requirement. Make sure you check with your insurer. And again, remember that just because the cafeteria plan rules allow it doesn't mean the insurance contract may have limitations on auto and what events they will um, permit to change the elections during the year. So again, please, this is something you have to be very careful with. Are there any questions? Yeah, we, have, we have just one question. 
does an employer have to stop BC FSA contributions when an employee goes out on FMLA? Well, they're no longer eligible because the reason why the reason why um, you have it is to work. If you're on if if you're on family and medical leave, there's no reason for it. Okay, and one more. With the exception of COBRA qualifying events, does the timeline to make a mid-year change 30 days from the date of on from the qualifying event? Generally, it has to be at least 30. It can be longer than that. That's it for what I have. We can uh, unmute if you'd like. Yes, go ahead. Anybody have any questions? The conference has been unmuted. Anybody have any questions? And that's probably not all of them, because that's an old, old list. Anybody have any questions? Uh, I don't even think it includes, oh, the Kansas City ones are the small ones there. Okay. I don't think there's any more questions. Everybody, thank you, and I'll send you, if you, again, send me an email, I can send you the invite uh, for the coming up on the 25th of The conference has been muted.